Uh, my, my dad suffered severely from you know, bipolar and, and, uh, and depression. It wasn't a, an absolute shock. I knew that, that something definitely wasn't, wasn't right with him. And he'd even, even told me, you know, a couple of weeks before that, he'd been suicidal, but he was, um, he was through that and, and, and that sort of thing. But it was a, a very difficult thing to, to accept, you know, to, to lose your, your dad, but to lose him in, in that way, knowing that you know, he, he took his own life and it was, it was avoidable. Initially after I left Perth, I basically lived like a gypsy for a while. They were still paying me, obviously. So I went to Newcastle, I went to Bondi, worked in my friend's cafe, Porch and Parlour, for free, for food only. And eventually around Christmas time, I don't know, I actually hit the wall. I, I burnt out in a massive way and it wasn't due to that period of my life. The reason for it happening was the 16 years of being on the road and kind of being ungrounded, um, changing cities and countries every other year and contracts and never really processing what I was going through, the highs and lows of a, being a professional athlete. When I hit the wall, I spent two years at home basically. Uh, none of my best friends saw me, got a response from me. Uh, my phone might as well have been thrown out because I wasn't replying to anyone, I didn't want to see anyone. Definitely soul searching. To find out that a, you know, quite a historic Spanish club uh, in the second division were, were after me for three years was a dream come true. Um, probably the real first time where I could say, uh, you know, one of my long-term goals had, had been achieved um, at the age of 20. Within a week or two, it had obviously come up in, in the medical there that there was an issue with, uh, with my heart. Within sort of two weeks, going from pretty much being on top, of, on top of the world for me, on top of my world, to sort of seeing those, those dreams yeah, come, come crashing down. And, and the hardest thing now and then was that there was nothing I could do about, about that. The reality of football is that it's either you're up at your highest or you're down at the lowest. There's no in between. It's, it's tough to cope with being replaced. You like, it's, for me, it's the biggest, I guess, demon that I've had to battle with because of my injuries. Being, um, feeling that what I contribute is sort of worthless in a way because, um, you know, there's someone else that I guess they, the coaches think they can do the same thing as you can. The hardest thing about having injuries affected me more mentally than physically because I knew month by month I'll start, you know, gradually walking and then running, but mentally I'm not doing what I love. I'm sitting in bed just thinking. Uh, you, just, you just get into a state where nothing matters. You don't care about anything anymore. You feel like you're sort of worthless. I had everything from you know, soft tissue injuries to ankle surgeries to bulging discs to um, you know, biomechanical issues and um, you know, unfortunately um, it caught up on me and um, you know, still to this day I, you know, I struggle with a um, chronic um, ankle injury where I, I wake up in the morning and you know, limp to the toilet until I get it warm for the day. You know, I'll never run again so it's, um, you know, Football obviously was, you know, the reason behind that, but it's something that, you know, I'll have to deal with for the rest of my life. Psychologically, the impact of not knowing is, is extremely difficult. It's, it's something you think about, probably not every day, but maybe every month or every five months when you, when you look at the days counting down on the calendar that your contract is going to expire. For me, that's what I was doing in Brisbane. The past year, I was just going, when, when am I going to sit down and talk about my future with this club? When you're not playing, no one really cares about you. It's sort of a, um, you know, and it probably still happens to this day. You know, I think players are used and abused a little bit. Um, you know, if you're playing and doing well, everyone wants to know you. You're getting pats on the back, and if you're not playing or you're out injured, you know, you sort of just put to the side, and yeah, no one cares until you're sort of back on the training park or um, you know you're playing a good game. Going from 
you know, being told and having a schedule from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed, knowing what to do, where to be, you know, what uniform to wear, to all of a sudden, you know, having so much free time and not knowing what to do with it was, was pretty challenging. 